Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Joni from SimpleLivingMama.com and it has been a very long time since we have sat down and had a chat here on YouTube. And I'm going to kind of get into that. I took probably an eight to nine month break from making YouTube videos and there were several reasons why I um, decided to just take that much time off. And I'm not going to get into all of them, but um, one of the big reasons why I took so much time off is that we did move. We, um, if you don't know, my husband is in the military. He's a recruiter. And we ended up getting orders at the end of last year and having to move. And it was honestly one of the most stressful events of my life um, definitely hands down the most stressful move we've ever had to do and um, I guess I'm just gonna sort of jump in and start talking about that before I get into how our homeschool was affected by all of these changes as well so um, last year we bought a house at the beginning of 2021 um, with everything that had been going on with the pandemic and everything else a lot of the military moves were pushed and you know with the way things are you never know exactly when you're gonna have to move um, we had been at our current station for a couple of years and we knew that a move could be possible soon but when my husband reached out to people he was supposed to reach out to and talk to them about it before we bought the house they said you're not on any list to be moved anytime soon um, and so we found a property that had acreage I mean I, I vlogged about it we had so many plans with that house um, it was big enough for all of us a good price and a great interest rate that you can no longer find <laughs> um, so it had everything that we wanted and we really wanted to stay in in that area um, we loved it there still love it there so we just went ahead and bought the house and we kind of hoped and prayed that we would get two years there before um, he would have to move before he would get orders to move um, as life would have it as the military would have it nothing is completely in our control um, we bought the house in March and in September he got notice that he was put on a list to be moved <laughs> Um, it wasn't a, a done deal. It wasn't, this is 100% going to happen. Um, it was kind of like a potential list. So you're potentially going to move. And a lot of people who were put on that list got bumped off that list. It's a very iffy thing. My husband is getting close to retirement and we are both ready to be done with this lifestyle because it is just, it's a very iffy thing. You're always nothing is set in stone and you're always kind of you know you have to understand that you're gonna have to to move at some point or something's gonna happen something's gonna change it's it's stressful I'm I won't lie it's a stressful lifestyle to have to to be a part of um anyway we uh, got put on this list he was given um, a list of places that he could choose from that he could be moved to as a military recruiter, we don't move from base to base, post to post, or anything like that. We can get dropped off in any city in any part of this country that has a recruiting station, okay? Um, there were a few stations that were on that list that were within driving distance from our house, so he put those at the top of the list in hopes that we wouldn't have to just move after only living in the house for um, about a year. Of course, as luck would have it, we did not get picked for any of those stations. They ended up moving us back to our home state, although not anywhere near where we're from. We're in a completely different area of the state than where we're originally from. So, you know, that was kind of just a stressful situation, a bad blow. It was not something that we wanted to do. Um, but it was something that we kind of didn't have a choice to do. He had recently been promoted, so he couldn't just drop his retirement packet. Um, he has to stay in his 
promoted position for so many years before he can retire at at that rank. So, you know, we couldn't just be done um, with that, and we weren't prepared to just be done. Like, he, he's going to have to have another career to go into, and we need to have all of this stuff planned and figured out, which is what we're working on now um, before he retires. So, the housing market is crazy. It was crazy back in January and February when we were trying to find another place to live in our new location. We um, ended up having to come up and try to find a, a rental home. Obviously, having just bought a house the year before, we couldn't, we weren't really in a position to buy another house. So we needed to rent a house. Um, and since we are military and we're not living anywhere near a military installation, we do have programs available to us that help us with housing because there is a huge gap between what the military gives you for your housing um, and what housing prices actually are, especially with as quickly as rents have gone up. So for us to just rent a home on our own without using any of the military programs available to us, we would be out lots and lots of money, probably close to $1,000 a month out of our own pocket um, just for housing. And we didn't want to do that, especially because we're keeping our house in Alabama. We didn't want to have to leave more money elsewhere, you know. So we wanted to use the program um, and find somewhere to live. So um, when we came up to look for a home, we could not find a single house that would accept our pets, that would accept the military program. I mean, it was a completely wasted trip. And we're talking about, that's a 10 hour trip um, if you don't stop. When you have kids and you're traveling with pets or whatever else, it's a lot longer. It, we're talking closer to like 12, 13 hours. Um, and that's making good time. So that was a wasted trip. We ended up, when we went back home, we, um, we had somebody helping us through the military. Um, helping us try to find somewhere to live. We ended up having to settle on a house that's not exactly close to where my husband works. It is a four bedroom house, but it's half the size of the house that we were living in in Alabama. So it has been a huge transition. It has been a huge headache and it has been something that has really um, tested our patience and um, kind of humbled us a little bit. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, it's been, it's been an interesting, an interesting journey. So we do still own our home in Alabama. We're planning to get back to it hopefully in the next year or two, probably more like two years from now. Um, but that's just where we're at right now. So how does, how did homeschooling fit into all of this? So we found out about the possibility of having to move in September. Keep in mind, we had just moved into our house in March. So we found out about this possibility of having to move, found out for sure. I can't even tell you exactly for sure when we found out where we were going and that it was a completely done deal. I don't remember. I think it was around Christmas, maybe. I'm not sure. It was sometime in that time frame between September and December when we found out we were for sure going and we needed to find somewhere to live. So we did all of that and then we had to deal with all the house hunting and the actual moving, which was a complete huge upheaval. How did we homeschool through all of this? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, um, we've kept up with the basics. I wasn't doing a lot of extra stuff. There's so many things that I like to do as a homeschooling family that just did not get done. Extra art projects, no. Extra um, outings, like nature outings, field trips, stuff like that, no. That stuff did not happen. It just didn't. Um, my kids did their math, they did their reading, they did their language arts. Uh, we have our own special little morning time that I've I've vlogged about several different times and we come together at the beginning of the day and do the readings and do the narrations. That's it. That's what we did. We kept up with our lessons as best as we could. We took breaks when we had to move. I kept, when the actual move happened, we had the military move us for the most part. 
Um, when you have a military move, they give you a certain amount of pounds for your household, go household goods, a certain weight that they will pay to move for you. If you go over that weight, you have to pay for however much you've gone over and you don't know how much it's gonna be. It can be as much as a dollar per pound over. So, you know, someone came out, gave us an estimate of how much they thought all of our stuff weighed, and we made the decision to have them pack out our whole house and our office, but we were gonna pack out the garage ourselves because we had like um, a lawnmower in there and different things like that. And like, we didn't wanna go over, I, I estimate we probably would have went over two to 3,000 pounds. And in that case, um, yeah, that could be two or three thousand dollars that we would have been out of pocket. Um, so it was just, it cost less for us to get a U-Haul. My husband um, could pull his car with the U-Haul. I drove our van and we could move our stuff ourselves. The problem is we didn't take into account we were going to put the, his motorcycle in the back of the U-Haul and the sheer amount of time and energy it takes to actually pack up all of your stuff when you're dealing with toddlers and preschoolers. It's a lot to do. It's a lot. So we ended up having to make two trips with the U-Haul to get all of the stuff out of the garage. It was a, a disaster, a nightmare. We ended up being without all of our household goods for like two weeks. So we spent some time at our house in Alabama painting it, getting it ready for people to rent it from us, um, living on air mattresses, stuff like that. We spent some time there living that way, basically camping out in our own house. And then we spent like another week doing the same thing in this house. Um, so I had a, t a tote that had all of the kids' school stuff in it, like their, their basic school stuff, their reading language arts and you know, workbooks and stuff like that. So that tote stayed with me and they just worked from that while we were without all of our stuff. Um, I will say tons of life skills were learned during this move. So I, it wouldn't count it as, you know, a loss, a homeschool loss. Um, like my kids were just doing nothing during this time and learning, learning nothing but the basics. No, they learned a lot of stuff that, you know, not every kid gets to learn. We learned how to use a laundromat. We learned, um, they learned how to navigate because we were driving back and forth. Um, they learned all about maps, talking about gas prices. I'm thankful we moved when we did because the gas prices now are insane. Um, you know, we've talked about, they were there when we interviewed a property management company for our house in Alabama. They know all about renting and tenants and landlords and a lot of practical life skills that they may or may not need as adults. Um, so I will say, if you're making a big move, it might not be as complicated and crazy as what we went through this year, but if you're making a big move, there's gonna be a lot of real life skills, practical life skills that are involved. Um, like I said, we were without our household goods for probably around two weeks. I had a bin that had some basic kitchen supplies in it, like a, a skillet, a pot, and some utensils. So we were making very simple meals and I'd had the kids help me make the very simple meals. We also ate out way too much. Um, and they told me that they did not like that and that they were ready to have homemade food again, when we, were, especially when we were on the road so much, we were eating out quite a bit. Um, but anyways, they were just a part of all of that stuff. And that's like my biggest thing is just don't be afraid to involve your kids in, in some of the adult stuff, the life skills, the tasks. Like my oldest kids were helping me at the laundromat. Dragging clothes to a laundromat for a family of nine is a pretty big ordeal. So they had to help me with that. Um, and you know, trying to find a new place to live and how all that's going to work out. They were, they were right there with us and involved in everything. They were involved in the projects we did at the other house before we left it. Um, the painting and the different cleaning up things that we had to do around there. Um, 
don't discount life skills because they are definitely important. They need to be learned. A lot of kids are not learning these things because their parents put them elsewhere instead of having them do life alongside them. So they become adults and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I felt I did that a lot. Like when I became an adult, I didn't know what I was doing about anything. So I feel like helping the kids be prepared and to say, oh yeah, I remember when my parents had to do this. Um, I feel like that definitely counts for something, right? So if you're moving, simplify your homeschool, get your basics done, keep your basics to the side and a tote bin that goes with you. Um, have your kids, you know, during the day sit down, do some reading, do some math, do some language arts, whatever you're doing for those subjects and um, just have them do life alongside you and understand that moving is a big ordeal and sometimes it just has to happen. So anyway, I, I didn't really intend for this video to be completely about me telling you this craziness about our move, but that's kind of just what happened um, and how our homeschool played into that and what we went through with the move. Um, so if you've gotten this far, thank you so much. I do plan to be back here in this space fairly regularly, thankfully, or hopefully. Hopefully that's what happens. Um, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye.